Greetings fellow humans, I'm Martian Boo, and today we're going to talk about the latest balance patch, which actually includes a wild specific change. First up we have Demon Hunter, Unleash Fell is going from Monothirst 4 to Monothirst 6, and Relic of Dimensions is going from cost 5 to cost 6. Obviously these changes are meant for standard. I like that the Unleash Fell nerf was the Monothirst and not the actual cost of the card. Lifesteal Demon Hunter seems like it might be almost there and it would be a shame to lose it when we were so close. <laughs> Relic of Dimensions is a little sad because the card was fun and it wasn't like broken by any means in Wild, but the fact that I could play it and still have fun in Wild means it was probably pretty nutty in Standard, so I definitely understand. Anubricon is going from being able to cast unlimited minions for your armor to only three minions for your armor. Unlimited Snip Snap is nerfed once again. They nerfed Echo so that you couldn't play as many Snip Snaps as you wanted in Warlock, and it was kind of cute that you could circumvent that by having unlimited armor armor in Druid, but I think that was more cute than anything else. It's not like that was the best version of the deck. For Wild, I view this as a very good change because I feel like this card was going to be irrelevant or absurd, so giving it that hard limit definitely feels like there could be some middle ground at some point. Side note, if you have the signature of this card, I guess by tomorrow, you will get 1600 dust without having to actually disenchant the card. They're not sure that that's how they're going to handle signature changes in the future, but for this one, that's how they've chosen to do it. For Priest, Boon of the Ascended is going from cost 4 to cost 5, and Priestess Valish is going from cost 0 to cost 1. Not so much the Boon, but the Valish change at least affects Wild as far as Priest potential. There have been a couple of Priest decks that are kind of almost there that would have played Valish if they were good enough to see meta play. Obviously it's not changing anything relevant right now, and I think I view that as a good thing. I don't think anything in Wild that's using this and is good is going to be a fun deck to have around a lot. The other way that this is relevant to Wild is Fist of Raden used to be able to guarantee this in Shaman because it's the only zero cost legendary. So if you were a Fist of Raden memer, you're sad right now, but obviously that wasn't meta relevant. For Rogue, Necrolord Draka is going from cost four to cost five. Sinstone Graveyard is going from cost two to cost three. Sketchy Information is going from cost three to cost four. And Forsaken Lieutenant is going from cost two to cost three. In particular, I think the Sinstone and Draka changes might be some of the best things we see in this patch for Wild. Miracle Rogue was getting pushed out of the meta by Discard Warlock, which gets addressed later on in this patch. But without the Cataclysm on 4 for giant tempo swing and burst damage, Miracle Rogue was pretty ridiculous. Definitely one of the biggest things causing issues in Wild, I would say. Losing a mana on a couple of key cards in that deck I think slows it down enough that you might not really see it at all. Not so much for Second Lieutenant, but Sketchy Information was a card that was used in another obnoxious rogue deck, Mine Rogue. I'm going to go ahead and thank Standard for doing that. I don't think Mine Rogue was anywhere close to getting a wild adjustment, but it's one of my least favorite decks to face, so having Sketchy Information hit I think is a good thing. Snowfall Graveyard might be close enough to rotation that we don't see it changed by the time it hits wild, so it's nice to at least hit that deck in some way. Alright, here's the last standard change, and depending on who you are, you're either really happy or really sad. Renathal is going from 40 health to 35 health. The dev comment is, Renathal had its run. He's the most played card in the game, and the meta has warped around him for a long time, so we are making this change to open the meta back up. At the same time, we know he's one of the most popular cards we've ever made, so we wanted to preserve his core effect as an option for his fans. The wording on this surprises me a little bit. The first part of that, Renathal had its run, seems so final, you know, like they don't want him at all. They want him to be not a meta player, which is also interesting considering that they say he's one of the most popular cards they've ever made. So everyone likes him and you don't want him to be relevant. <laughs> That's not judgment on the decision itself. I just, I read this and I thought, Huh? So I really don't understand their stance on the card. I think there's a couple of changes I might have liked a little bit more. Maybe that this is a Gen Baku style of card where if you wanted the card just to have a short run, it could have just had a year run and then rotated it out. With Wild in mind, I think one of the coolest things they could have done is make it a Highlander card because I feel like there's insane crossover with the people who appreciate this card and the people who appreciate Highlander as an archetype. That all said, I don't know that I actually hate this change. I play a lot of Ranathal decks. I am a huge Highlander enthusiast, but I think I'm tired of, ah, <laughs> I see you've brought guests at least once, maybe twice at the beginning of literally every game. And I don't mind cutting a spider tank and the nine worst cards in my deck from a lot of the decks I play. Coming from paper card games, 
into digital. Early on in me playing Hearthstone, deck size and game length were two of the things that I felt were some of my biggest issues with the game, and Prince Renathal addresses both of those. The thing is, though, it doesn't address them for everyone. Like, I'm not playing a 40 health deck with 40 cards against everyone else having 40 health and 40 cards, you know? That's why I kind of prefer this for Highlander is because that deck is about breaking the mold right and I think the longer games and more cards in deck is something that I would want universally not necessarily as a mold breaker and this doesn't address the one or two copies of a card issue either you know like I'm used to four copies of a card 60 card deck most of the time so it's not a universal problem fixer and for me I think it might be the type of thing that was fun while it's lasted and I also think it's the type of thing where once I've had a sufficient break from it I will really miss this being a meta player so that is all a very convoluted way of me saying I view this change as bittersweet. <laughs> so I don't understand the dev's stated position on this card, but I do understand why it would need to be changed. And I am kind of on the fence about it, whether or not I'm pleased. I guess I've only been implying this, but I think the card isn't good anymore. <laughs> At 40 health, it was like just enough to make up for the huge downside of adding 10 extra cards to your deck. Prester Druid is the one example of where having the extra cards was a benefit because you had so much tutor for the Prester anyway and you wanted the extra cards in your deck to have more chances of getting a cheap Kazakusan. So that's like the one deck where having the extra cards was actually an upside. But those extra cards are a downside. They're an upside for fun, maybe, but as far as like competitive advantage, they are a downside. And 10 extra health is a lot of extra health to start the game with. It made up for having all of those extra bad cards in your deck. At half the amount of health, I don't know. I don't think it is. Against aggro decks with 40 health decks, they do get me down to three and one, you know? <laughs> you will probably still see me playing this in decks where I think having the extra cards would be fun, but as far as it being a relevant meta card, I'm betting that it's not good anymore. And finally, we have our wild specific change. Tome tampering is banned. So this is targeting discard warlock. You may remember from our Murder Castle Mathria review, Engine and Otters were very confident that this card was going to get banned. And while I'm pretty sure the context of that was like pretty early on in the expansion, I did tease them about it in our March of the Lich King review. Technically, they're correct. <laughs> it, did, it did eventually get banned, so I guess I'm taking the L. But surprisingly, it's not for its ability to cheat out a bunch of cheap one-cost things, as was thought initially. It was because of the hand-wide discard. So Disco Lock, you have all of those cards that benefit from getting discarded. And between this and Cataclysm, you have a bunch of easy ways to discard all of it. Cataclysm gives you a bunch of extra tempo by removing all of your opponent's things, and Tome Tampering gives you a bunch of extra value by shuffling all those cards back into your deck. And you don't insta-lose by losing your hand because Malakazar's Imp lets you redraw all of the cards that you would have discarded with these two things. I am a little surprised that this is the route that they went to tame that deck. A, because there is a wild exclusive card that could have been changed, so they could have changed Malkazar's Imp and handled it that way without actually having to use a ban. And if they were going to ban something, I'm surprised it wasn't Soul Barrage. Without all that extra burst damage, I don't think that this is even a deck. So I don't know about this choice, but like they have access to more data than I do. The big advantage of picking this one, and maybe this is why they did, is I think it is the most future-proofing. Because of the existence of Malkazar's Imp, negating the downside of actually discarding your hand. This does have a lot of potential to show up again with a play pattern that does more harm than good. If this does actually ruin Discard Warlock as we've seen it played recently, between that, the Miracle Rogue change, and the Renathal change, we could see aggro stonks shooting up, particularly maybe Pirate Rogue, if you liked that, is going to have a good time. This week I'm going to try and see if I can't get C'Thun Druid to work, because C'Thun Druid benefits from an aggro meta and benefits from its opponent only having 30 health. So if you were a fan of me playing that deck, I will revisit it. Now we have some buffs. So the dev comment is, Death Knight is the cool new class that many players want to try out, so we're making some adjustments to open them up a little and give them some more toys to tinker with. Like with the nerfs, these buffs are designed to be higher confidence. We specifically looked for low play rate Death Knight cards that seemed primed for upgrades. We plan to take another look in the next balance pass. 
surely they mean patch there. So we have Corpse Bride, which is going from max 8 corpses to max 10 corpses. Malignant Horror, the most powerful arena card at the moment, is going from requiring 5 corpses to requiring 4 corpses. I have tried to play this a little bit in Constructed, and it feels impossible <laughs> with the high corpse requirements. So as far as Constructed is concerned, I definitely understand it. That was a lot of corpses. Meat Grinder is going from giving you 3 corpses to giving you 4 corpses. Blight Fang is going from 3 health to 4 health. Stitched Giant is going from cost 10 to cost 9. Deathbringer is going from 3 attack to 4 attack. Rhyme Sculptor is the same, 3 attack to 4 attack. Obliterate is going from dealing the entire health of the damaged minion to 3 flat health. And Blood Tap is going from requiring 3 corpses to requiring 2 corpses. Overall, I think that these Death Knight changes are super disappointing. <laughs> it could be that the absence of Renathal from the meta is going to make Death Knight a little bit more of a player in Standard. I thought it was a nerf at first because Blood Death Knight is the one that's working and it wants to play Renathal, but if you think about Frost in the context of 30 health instead of the context of 40 health, it might actually get a lot better. Undead does feel like it's the rune system that required the most change but really what i would have liked to see is the rune restrictions lessened maybe this will be different once like a year has passed and we have a lot of death knight cards to work with but for now the restriction just feels like a handicap it doesn't feel like a fun deck building mechanic all of the most powerful cards are locked behind triple runes so instead of having the three slots to customize however we want it feels like we have blood frost and unholy there doesn't seem like there's a lot of potential for a mix of the runes i would have loved to see all the triple cost ones go down to just two and some of the two cost ones go down to ones so that we could actually like play and experiment with the rune system a little bit more because that's like one of the most exciting things about the class mechanically is the rune system. So yeah, I would have liked them to, to push that into a more exciting space rather than just taking the most unplayable cards and making them slightly less unplayable. Are some of these good? Probably. I bet you the blood tap change is better than it looks. I bet you the plus one attack on the is probably better than it seems. The obliterate change initially I was super excited for, but it is going to be much worse when we're killing off like small pirates and stuff with it but killing off cannon is the same and now you can kill a larger threat without taking like a ton of damage to your health i've actually always wondered since the lich king was in standard if obliterate was a card how good would it actually be and sure enough it's uh bad enough that you would buff it <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember them adding the one mana requirement to Flesh Giant, but that didn't really significantly impact its play rate. So for Stitch Giant, I don't know how much difference that the nine mana is going to make. For Wild, it means that you can't run this in even Death Knight anymore. I don't think that really matters because I don't think even Death Knight is good, and I don't think that even Death Knight ran the 10 mana version of this card. The Corpse Spender for that deck is a finisher. This does require only two Unholy Runes, though. So between this and the Corpse Bride change, I wonder if we could see an aggro deck, maybe at least in standard, where you play Corpse Bride and then you get to play a Stitch Giant or two alongside that all in the same turn. In Wild, you could play the Corpse Bride on five, and then on six, you could play a couple Stitch Giants alongside your Lotheb, maybe in the game that way. So all that said, I think the Corpse Bride change is maybe a little bit more interesting than the Stitch Giant change, <laughs> but you still got to get those corpses up. I'm going to try out these Death Knight cards because I really want to get Death Knight wins. I want to get to that 1k. I I also just want to play Death Knight. Like this is the class if they were going to add one that I've always wanted to play. So I'm going to going to do my marshy best to make something work with this in wild, but we'll see. <laughs> that about wraps things up. Let me know in the comments what you thought of these changes, what you would have liked to see changed instead. Like and subscribe for more Martian videos. And thank you so much for watching.